As we've seen over the last few videos, humans cause a huge amount of damage to the environment. Whether it's climate change, deforestation, or dumping waste, the end result is a reduction in biodiversity and a damaged ecosystem. But there are some ways that we can reverse this trend, either by reducing the bad practices that cause the damage in the first place, or reducing the impact of those bad practices and helping the ecosystems withstand them. One way to improve biodiversity is with breeding programs, which are often set up for endangered species to reduce the chance that they'll go extinct. These generally involve breeding the animals in captivity so that we can safely build up their numbers and hopefully at some point reintroduce them to the wild where they could either join an existing population or form a new one. One of the problems with breeding programs though is that unless the natural habitat that they came from is safe, then the endangered species population will probably just decline again. So another important solution is creating protected areas and regenerating rare habitats, like mangroves and coral reefs. The hope is that if these areas are protected properly, then we won't even need the breeding programs in the first place, because all of the organisms living there will be safe. An important part of wildlife conservation is reducing the impact of harmful but necessary practices, like farming, which we of course have to do if we want to eat. And governments often help with this by introducing new laws, or paying farmers to do the right thing. For example, if we take a look at this field, we can see a field margin, which is a narrow strip all the way around the field in which anything can grow, and also a hedgerow, which is made up of shrubs and trees and acts like a border all the way around the field. Both of these practices are being encouraged by the government in an effort to increase biodiversity, which they can do by providing different habitats and food sources to the crops that are being grown in the field. And so a greater range of different species can live there. Governments actually regulate loads of things, for example, they often set quotas on how much deforestation is allowed each year and how much carbon dioxide can be released into the atmosphere by businesses. Often though, making a difference is up to us as individuals. If we choose to recycle our waste rather than putting it in the bin and we don't buy so much junk that we don't need, then there'll be less waste in landfill sites. And this is good for two reasons. For one, there'll be more land left undamaged and for two, there'll be fewer toxic chemicals that can eke their way into the environment. Now, this all makes it sound quite simple. Surely we can just do more of this stuff and fix all these environmental problems that we have. Theoretically, we could. All of the problems mentioned are fixable. In practice though, there's a whole bunch of things that get in the way. A big one is money. Protecting biodiversity is expensive and individuals, companies, and governments often overlook just how they benefit from high biodiversity, and so they generally prefer to use their limited money elsewhere. Another issue is that in order to maintain our current high standard of living, we need to damage the environment. For example, we have to use fertilizers and pesticides in order to grow enough food for everyone, and we have to dig huge mines so that we can get to the rare metals that we need for our phones and computers. In developing countries, things are a bit different. People there often rely on the environment for their very livelihood. For example, when they cut down forests, it's often to build their homes, have enough firewood to cook their food, or clear enough land to grow a few crops. Anyway, that's all for today. So if you enjoyed it, then please do share it with your friends, and we'll see you next time.